In this video, we're going to take a hands-on look at successful unit testing with Makito. Makito is a framework for mocking objects in a unit test. And why would we want to do that? Well, we want to remove any blockers that prevent us from creating successful unit tests. And if I said that I wanted to test the specimen service concept that we see here in the service class, we see that it has dependencies on some data access objects, or DAOs, that we haven't even created yet. So we might say, well, I can't do a true unit test on specimen service because it has to have interactions with the database, and those interactions are through these DAOs. Well, not necessarily. With Makito, we can effectively mock out these dependencies and have a true unit test where we're focusing only on the service classes. So let's get started. Now we know we don't have those DAO classes or even the interfaces yet, and we know that we also do not have a fully written service layer even though we've started it. But that's okay because we're doing test-driven design. We're designing our program by looking at the test first and then realizing what we need to create, and we'll continue to do that in this video. The example that I'm going to use is this given when then here, which is an elaboration of as a homeowner, I want to be able to catalog my specimens so that I will remember what I planted. So given specimen data are available, when the user or service posts a new specimen object with valid attributes latitude 39.74 and longitude minus 84.51, then my plant diary will create a new specimen for this record and will return the specimen object. Let's start with the test class we've been working with so far. And just to confirm, I've committed and pushed my work so far, so we're starting with a brand new commit. Let's create our test method with the at test annotation, and we know we'll typically give this a descriptive method name. So void save specimen, validate return specimen with latitude and longitude. So we typically make this a very descriptive method name because if the test fails, it's going to tell us what method it failed on. And a descriptive name that starts with essentially the method we're testing and how we're testing that method will give us a good idea of what potentially might have gone wrong. So we'll use our same given when then syntax and the given statement is the same as a previous test we've written. So we can simply reuse that given specimen data are available. Then we'll say when user creates a new specimen and saves, and then then create new specimen record and return it. So you notice that I'm the when and then methods do not yet exist, but we can go ahead and create those with alt enter, create method, and once again, alt enter, create method. With these methods now created, we can look at our when and our then. Let's hold the given for the end because that's going to be the most complicated, but we can start to explore the when and the when. So when the user creates a new specimen, latitude 3974, longitude 8451. Okay, we see we already have a specimen object up here. We know we're gonna do some magic to that in the given in just a moment. Let's just look at the when now. We'll say specimen dot set latitude and we said 39.74, I believe is the latitude, and then specimen set longitude, and for that one we said minus 84.51. Now in the then create new specimen record and return it, well, okay, let's see. We're going to use our test-driven design approach here, and we're going to say specimen service dot, well, we kind of want to save this specimen, but you notice there's not a save method yet. Let's just keep going for a little bit though, and, and we'll let ID, the IDE help us out with this one. So save specimen, there we go. And we'll also say specimen, new specimen, let's say created specimen. So we have a different variable name for the specimen we're saving and the one that we're getting back. So specimen created specimen equals specimen service dot save. Now the trick is if we take a look at our specimen service interface, we don't currently have a save method on there, but here again, this is test driven design. So let's alt enter and say create method and take a look what happens. It creates a method with the proper signature for us. But remember, this is just the interface. And we know that the interface is essentially a contract or a list of methods. And any class that implements that interface must also implement those methods. So if we look, we see one related problem. We click and it says, well, hey, you've updated the size specimen service interface, but that 
method does not exist in the specimen service stub class that implements it. So alt enter implement methods and now we have a save method. What is the service going to do with this? Well, it's going to call down to a specimen DAO, which is in a package called com.myplantdiary.dao. I've added an extra term here, also enterprise. We won't worry about that one. But what you'll notice is there is no DAO package and there is no iSpecimen DAO interface. But now we see through test-driven design, this is something that we need to make. So I'm going to say new package and we'll simply say DAO. And inside of the DAO, I'm going to say new Java class and we'll say interface and we'll say iSpecimen DAO. And so it creates a basic DAO with nothing in it. Now we'll go back to our stub and we'll think about how this stub is going to handle the DAO. Well, let's see here. We'll say I specimen. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do this. We'll handle this through a constructor injection. So I'm going to make two constructors for specimen service stub. One that's default, takes no arguments, and one that accepts an object of this I specimen DAO type. You'll see why I'm doing this in just one moment. So constructor, public, no return type, but the constructor name is the same as the class name, specimen service stub. And this one will be our default constructor. And then we'll say public specimen service stub. And this one is going to an accept an object of type I specimen DAO. We'll call that one specimen DAO. Open and close curly. And once again, let's let IntelliJ help us out here. I'm going to say Alt Enter and notice the shortcut create field for a parameter. Now look at line nine when I press Enter. And you see what happens is it's created a new attribute that's private called specimen DAO. Now that hopefully makes sense here because this constructor is accepting a specimen DAO and then simply storing it into an attribute. But why did I have to make a default constructor as well? Well, if we don't specify any constructor, we get the default constructor for free at compile time. But the moment we specify a constructor with a different signature, in other words, a different parameter list, we no longer get that default constructor for free. So I wanted to put it back in to make sure anyone calling it is still able to use it. Now, let's go down to our save method and let's say uh, specimen DAO dot save specimen. Gosh, we've been down this path before, haven't we? Because take a look, this specimen DAO that we just created does not have a save method. And here we're trying to call the save method. So let's hold Alt, press Enter, and say create method. And once again, take a look at our DAO, and we have created our method. So you notice so far, just by working through our test-driven design, we're starting to elaborate a lot of our class diagram into actual code. Now, here's the trick is we have our specimen DAO. We know our specimen service stub requires a specimen DAO, but we don't know what that specimen DAO does or how it's going to do it. And that's fine because the purpose of a unit test is to test an individual class. Uh, if we had a, an, an integration test, we would actually test the connection between classes. But then we also know if we're going to test our specimen service, whether it's the stub or the actual implementation, it's going to have a dependency on that DAO. So this is where Mockito comes in. What we'll do is we're going to mock our DAO, or in other words, we're going to create kind of like an inline hard-coded version of that DAO that simply returns predictable results. It's very similar to what we did in the stub, only here with Mockito, we're doing it all in line in this one class, and then we will take that and we will pass it to our specimen service stub and say, hey, here's the DAO I want you to use. So, mockito.win. Note that I have access to this automatically, and I can simply alt enter and import class, and the IDE will take care of it for me. Mockito is a third party library, and it is a bit curious how I already have access to it, but that all comes baked in in some of our POM dependencies, including Spring Boot starter tests. So if you don't get that autocomplete, the IDE might help you to decide which item to add to your POM.xml. But if not, just take a look at the one that I'm posting here and I'll have it on GitHub and you can see it there. In any case, we have to follow the Mockito syntax, which is a little bit funny. So Mockito.win, that means when whatever action happens in these parentheses. And after that, we'll say then return. 
And then return means, okay, when the item in the parentheses occurs, I want you to return this. So when we're going to say specimen DAO dot save specimen, then return specimen. Now you'll notice that specimen DAO is red and for good reason, because if you look through this class, there is no variable called specimen DAO. And you can probably tell from the word that it's going to be of type I specimen DAO, which is an interface we don't yet have a class that implements that interface, so we'll use a little bit of Mockito magic. Let's go ahead and declare this as an attribute. We'll say private I specimen DAO, specimen DAO. And then above this, let's use a new annotation, mockbean. What that means is create your own implementation out of this interface and then fill it with whatever we specify in Mockito.win. Fix a little typo here. And now we see we no longer have a red line. So this is our variable, variable of this interface type. And right here, what we're essentially doing is giving behavior to a mocked class. We're saying, if someone calls save on this and passes in a specimen, then return the same specimen. Now, we also need to associate the specimen DAO with our specimen service stub. There's a, a really good way to do this that involves having multiple environments and giving Spring Boot some awareness of those multiple environments, but I might cover that in a future video, but I thought that would just kind of confuse things in this video. So I'm going to take an unapproved approach and go one step backwards here, remove the auto-wired annotation for now, and we are going to create an object of this specimen service ourselves instead of having Spring do it for us. So specimen service equals new specimen service. Remember that keyword new? We haven't seen it in a while. Uh, well, we'll go specimen service stuff. We haven't seen it in a while because we know with Spring we normally don't need to do that. But here again, our focus is on mocking, not so much on Spring. So I'm calling the constructor for specimen service stub. And remember what I did just a few moments ago. I have a default constructor, and then I have a different constructor that accepts an object of type I specimen DAO. I hope you're able to connect the dots on this now and see how we're going to populate this I specimen DAO, which is then going to be called by our save method in this class. So how are we going to populate it? Well, for our testing purpose, we're simply going to pass in this mock. So we'll say specimen DAO. And there is our given. So let's go down now and let's finish out our then and just a couple lines to go here. First of all, we want to make sure that the created specimen that is returned is the same as the specimen that we're saving. We could have done this a few other ways. We could have had like a return a Boolean and test that or something of that nature. But let's go ahead and just say assert equals. And this is a JUnit method. And we have our expected. Actually, let's say specimen. Let's say that one's the expected. And then the actual is created specimen. Couple more things I want to do while we're here. One thing is it's going to be a bit easier if we go ahead and instantiate an object into the specimen up top here. So specimen, specimen equals new specimen. And a couple other things I want to do just because we're doing our test driven design. If we look at our DAO, we know that a save could throw an exception. What if we're saving to a database and the database is offline? Or what if we're staying, saving to a file system and we're out of disk space? So let's go ahead and say throws exception. This won't change our test significantly. Not at the moment. Uh, let's see, we need to update our methods here in our service layer as well, which means we need to update the signature in the implementation class as well. Now we go back to our test class and because we're calling save, we're going to need to throw exceptions from a few more methods here. Uh, essentially what we're doing is we're bubbling the exception all the way up to the test method. The reason why we do that is that if an exception is uncaught, it will automatically fail the test. So let's take a look at what we have so far. And test pass, which is exactly what I was hoping to see. So that's, that's great news. 
So we see now we're able to effectively unit test the service layer without even knowing what happens in the DAO layer aside from us hard coding something that's a predictable result in our mock object. Now one other consideration. I've occasionally sat with a tester and asked how testing is going and I get the answer, well, I really can't test this because the output is it calls a method. It's easier to test something where the output is maybe a row in the database or some other change of state. A new file is created, a record is modified, something like that. But how do you test a process when successful output of that process results in a method being invoked? As it ends up, Makito can handle that as well because every time one of these mocked methods is called on our mocked object, it makes a record of it. It sees what method was called and what arguments were passed to that method, and then we can simply verify that the method was called with those arguments. It's only one line, but I'll admit that the syntax is goofy. So we start with verify, which is a static method of Makito. So Alt-Enter. And you see, IntelliJ is going to say, well, I don't know what you want me to do here. Do you want me to create a new method or import a static? I'm going to say import a static. And if I scroll down a little bit, you see there are several static methods called verify. But the one specifically that I want is Makito verify. So there we go. We select that. It's good. Now with verify, we start with the mocked object, which remember is specimen DAO, the one that we created up in our given right here. Uh, actually, more precisely, the one that has the at mock bean annotation on top of it. So we start with specimen DAO, and then we say, how many times do we want to verify this method was called? And I'll say at least once. There are several other permutations of this. You can verify it was called never, it was called two times, less than two times, so on and so forth. This one is pretty safe for us. Now, I close the parenthesis of that verify method call, which feels kind of weird based on what I'm about to do next. What I'm about to do next is put a period and then put the method that I want to verify and the parameter list that I want to verify is being passed into that method. Okay, so we read this out of order. I'm verifying that the method save is called with this specimen argument on the mocked object specimen DAO at least once. So it's a bit kind of funny order, but nonetheless, you can still see what's going on. So we save and we play. And our test pass, wonderful. Just to make sure that we're not making things up here, let me go ahead and put in an invalid argument. Let's run the test one more time. And sure enough, this time we see a failure. We, we can read the difference here and what it says it wanted and what it got. So you see when I passed in null, I was not passing in specimen. On a similar note, I could change the assert equals and we can verify that that is working properly if I put in something that certainly won't work. So we'll try this one again. And once again, a failed test. Uh, so we'll put this back to what it was before. So in this video, we've seen how to use Mockito to mock out some dependencies in our tests and have actual unit tests. You might say, well, wait a minute though, you were testing the stub, not the actual service. Well, guess what? We haven't created the actual service yet, but by doing this test framework as we've done it, you see we've been able to create more of our application. We've created a new package, we've created a new interface, and we've added new metho methods to our specimen service. True test-driven design. The good news is, because our specimen service stub and our specimen service both implement the same interface, once we have the actual specimen service, we can test that using the same test. All we'll need to do is change out this object instantiation here, or even better, we can use at profile, at configuration, at active profile, at primary, at bean, and several other annotations to actually use a different class based on whether we're testing or we're actually running. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.